Hello my friends, I'm here in the Butterfly Dreams Fairy Tale Library and I understand it's bedtime but you don't seem to be asleep, do you? Hmm, well, I think I know just the thing for that. Oh, perfect, one of my favourites. <laughs> now, spit spot, under the covers, head on your pillow and we'll begin our story. If you are looking for number 17, Cherry Tree Lane, and it is likely that you are, for this book is all about that particular house. You'll find it. 4 children live here. Jane, the oldest, Michael, her brother, and the twins. The family's nanny had left unexpectedly, and it was bedtime. Outside, the east wind blew, howling through the cherry trees that lined the street. The wind madly spun Admiral Boom's weather vane. Oh my goodness. Michael joined his sister Jane at the window. The twins were howling as loud as the wind. And that's when they saw a strange shape flying toward them. It was a woman carrying an umbrella in one hand and a carpet bag in the other. The wind seemed to fling her at the house where she landed heavily against the front door, quieting even the twins. Well, I've never seen that before, said Michael. <laughs> Neither had their parents, for they promptly opened the door. At the top of the landing, the children watched as this curious visitor flew up the banister. Jane and Michael slid down the banister all the time, much to their parents' dismay, but never up. Despite the wind, she was neat as a pin, thank you very much. But there was something very exciting about her. I am Mary Poppins. How did you find us? asked Jane. Well, the wind blew me here, she said. And then Mary Poppins wasted no time in getting settled. She removed her hat, set down her umbrella, and from her strange bag she pulled out a starch apron which she tied around her waist, a bottle of scent, a box of lozenges, a set of dominoes, two bathing cups, seven flannel nightgowns, four cotton ones, a large bar of soap, a pair of boots, a postcard album, a toothbrush, and a pack of hairpins. Now, spit spot to bed, she said. And before they knew it, Jane and Michael and even the twins were put in their pajamas, bathed and brushed and read to, much to their parents and their delight. Mary Poppins, you'll never leave us, will you? asked Michael. I'll stay until the wind changes, she said. From that night on, Mary took charge and the children followed. And every day with Mary was an adventure. They always waved to Miss Lark, their next door neighbor, on their way out. Good morning, and how are we today, she said. Jane and Michael never knew if she was asking how they were or how her spoiled, fluffy little dog was. <laughs> they always stopped to admire the matchman's work. On sunny days, the matchman made chalk drawings on the sidewalk instead of selling matches. Strike me pink, Mary always said when she was pleased. <laughs> on this particular day, Mary Poppins, Jane and Michael were taking the bus to pay a visit to Mary's uncle, Mr. Wig. Why is your uncle called Mr. Wig? asked Michael. Does he wear one? He is called Mr. Wig because Mr. Wig is his name, said Mary and he doesn't wear one, he is bald. Inside number three Robertson Road, an enormous table was laid for tea. But where was Mr. Wig? Jane and Michael heard a giggle and they looked up. Where could he be? Oh, Uncle Albert, not again. It's not your birthday, is it? Mary Poppins asked. I'm afraid it is my birthday, he said. And whenever my birthday falls on a Friday, well, it's all up with me, absolutely up. Why, asked Jane. How, asked Michael. Well, you see, the first funny thought, and I'm up like a balloon. And until I think of serious, I can't get down. The children laughed, and the more they laughed, a curious thing happened. Jane felt herself growing lighter and lighter. It was more a delicious feeling, which made her laugh too. Then Michael started laughing too, oh my goodness. But Mary Poppins liked to be proper. Really, she said, really such behavior. Come up, Mary Poppins, cried the children. Think of something funny. But Mary didn't need to. She could fly even without laughing. And she brought the table with her. 
Time for tea, announced Mr. Wig. And the children laughed some more. A tea party on the ceiling, really. It's time to go, said Mary after a while. And no need to think about serious things like school or growing up. They all came down with a thump, just in time to catch the bus home. When the days started growing shorter, Mary Poppins brought Jane and Michael to the most curious shop they'd ever seen. Fanny, Annie, Mary called out to an empty shop. Annie, Fanny, her echo called back. Quite curious. Miss Fanny and Miss Annie appeared with their mother, Mrs. Corey. How do you do, she said with a dreamy smile. She offered Jane and Michael a baker's dozen of gingerbread, each adorned with a gilt paper star. Arms piled up with delicious dark cakes, Mary and Jane and Michael headed home. They really do make the best gingerbread. Later that night, after the gingerbread was gone and they had their gold stars away in the nursery, Jane and Michael awoke to voices outside the window. Fanny and Annie each held a ladder and set them up with each one at the end of the earth, the other in the sky. Mrs. Corey painted the sky with glue and Mary Poppins stuck gilt stars that began to twinkle furiously. They're stars! Are the stars gold paper? Or is the gold paper stars, Jane wondered. But she knew that only someone very much wiser than Michael could give her the answer to that. It's quite true. Another bedtime on a cold winter night, Michael was thinking about elephants. I wonder what happens at the zoo at night. Spit spot to bed you go, said Mary Poppins. She knows everything, but she never tells, Jane whispered. I never explain anything. Just as they were about to drop off into sleep, they heard a voice say, hurry. Jane and Michael followed the voice out of bed and down the lane, across the park, until they came to the zoo. In the light of the full moon, Jane and Michael saw the most amazing thing. The animals were free. In the center of it all was Mary Robbins. The voice belonged to a bear wearing a coat with brass buttons. He handed them each a ticket and told them, we are all made of the same stuff. Bird and beast, star and stone, we are all one. Oh, I just love that, don't you? Winter turned to spring, as it does, and the bare cherry trees on Cherry Tree Lane blossomed and rained pink petals once again. Mary Poppins was especially quiet as she tidied up after supper. For a moment, she put one hand lightly on Michael's head and the other on Jane's shoulder. There was something different in the air. Admiral Boom's weather vane confirmed. The wind had changed. Jane and Michael heard the front door slam and they rushed to their bedroom window. Jane and Michael opened the window. Mary Poppins, they shouted. The wind blew her over the rooftops and away from Cherry Tree Lane. Would they ever see her again? Au revoir, she called. Which means, dear reader, to meet again. The end. Oh now wasn't that a delightful story? Now spit spot off to bed with you, you've had your story. And thank you so much to Butterfly Dreams and Metamorphosis for inviting me to their fairy tale library so I could share this story with you. Good night everyone. Au revoir.